Dear students, in this class, we will learn how to write a MATLAB code to find the linear convolution of two sequences without using inbuilt function. The convolution is the mathematical way of combining the two signal to form the third one. The convolution is used in filtering, correlation, compression, and in many other applications. The linear convolution is the mathematical operation used to express the relation between the input and the output of an LTI system. Y of n is the output of an LTI system, which is equal to x of n is the input of an LTI system. H of n is the impulse response of an LTI system. It is a convolution of two sequence. This y of n is equal to summation k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k into h of n minus k. From this formula, we can derive the four important steps used in linear convolution. The first one is folding and shifting, multiplication and summation. So folding of h of k, shifting of h of minus k and multiplying h of minus k with x of k and perform addition. To compute linear convolution using MATLAB, we need to follow the following procedure. First, we have to get the input from the user. Here we have two input, x of n and h of n. Then we have to calculate the length of x of n, h of n and y of n. We know that the length of y of n is equal to lx plus lh minus one. And the very important thing here, we have to pad zeros to make the length equal to capital N. Then we have to implement the equation using the for loop. After the implementation, we have to plot the signal for x of n, h of n, and y of n using the MATLAB function stem and display the output. The MATLAB function used in this particular program is input, length, zeros, disk, stem, x label, y label, and title. The operator used in the code is colon and comma. Then we will see how to compute this linear convolution by taking few examples. x of n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. h of n is 1, 2, 1, 2. These are the two inputs. We have to calculate the length of x and length of h. Here the length is 4 and 4. If you try to calculate the length of y of n, it's nothing but lx plus lh minus 1. So 4 plus 4 minus 1 is equal to 7. Now using a tabular method, we are going to compute a linear convolution by writing the values in the table form. First, we have to write the value for x of n in the vertical order 1, 2, 3, 4. Another one, the next input h of n 1, 2, 1, 2. And perform, first we have to multiply. 1, we have to multiply with 1, 2, 1, 2. 2, we have to multiply with 1, 2, 1, 2. And 3, we have to multiply with 1, 2, 1, 2. And 4, we have to multiply with 1, 2, 1, 2. We'll be getting the corresponding values. Then we have to perform addition diagonally. Here, y of n is equal to 1, 4, 8, 14, 15, 10, and 8. And if you see the index value, here the index will start from 0. For this value, the index will be n minus 1. Your n minus 1 is 8 minus 1 is equal to. Your n is equal to 7. 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. Next, we will see how to execute, how to write the code using the for loop. For a discrete time, a finite duration signal, we can take the summation limit from k is equal to 0 to n minus 1. So we can write y of n is equal to summation k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k into h of n minus k. Whereas in MATLAB, the array index will start from 1. So the array index will start here from 1. 
So now what we have to do for this summation limit, we are going to perform addition with one. So k is equal to zero plus one. We'll be getting your k is equal to one. If you try to perform addition with one year, here it is n minus one plus one. So minus one and plus one will be canceled. We'll be getting your n. The same thing we have to use it for h of n minus k. For this value, we have to perform addition with one. And we are going to use the for loop. So in MATLAB, we have to use the for, we have to give the variable, then we have to give the list of statement, then we have to go with end. So that is the syntax of for loop in MATLAB. So here we have to use two loop, one as the outer loop, another one as the inner loop. So here the outer loop is n, the inner loop is k. And this entire equation is nothing but the sum of product. So we have to write in the form of a is equal to a plus b, and a is the sum and b is the product. So we can write here y of n is equal to y of n plus the product. And here the product is x of k into h of n minus k plus one. You will see how to write this code using MATLAB. So when you're writing the code, we have to start with clear the command window, clear all and close all. So clear all the variable and close all the existing windows, the previous windows. So now we have to get the input from the user. X is equal to input, enter the input sequence. H is equal to input, enter the input sequence of a signal H of N. After getting the input from the user, we have to calculate the length of x and length of h and say the variable here is n1 and n2. The next step we have to find what is the length of y of n by taking n1 plus n2 minus 1. We know the formula of y of n, the length of y of n is lx plus lh minus 1. And here we have to do a zero padding to make the length is equal to capital N. How we are going to pad zeros with the help of a zero function. So we have a zero function, one comma, we have to take this n minus n1. And here the row is one. If you take the sample as four and the length it will be of seven, seven minus four will be three. Then we have to pad your three zeros. The same procedure we have to follow for h. Then we have to make the initial output as zero. So we have to use zeros of one comma n. Now we are going to perform linear convolution using the for loop. And here we have two loop, one as the outer loop, another one as the inner loop. For outer loop, the variable is n is equal to one colon n. And for the inner loop, we have to take k is equal to one to small n. And we have to write the expression. We know that here the expression is a sum of product. So y of n is equal to y of n plus x of k into h of n minus k plus one. After computing this, we have to display the value of y. So we have to use the display function, a display of y. Then we have to plot the signal by taking the value, the variable n, y. And here we are going to plot three plots, one for the input, another one for h of n, another one for the output. So totally here we have three plots. So we are going with three rows, one column, and pointing the first plot. The three rows of one column pointing the second plot, a three, one, three point, pointing the third plot. Then we have to plot for ny comma x, ny comma h, ny comma small y. After plotting the signal, we have to go with the x label. So we have to assign the label to this graph. So we have to assign the x label, y label, and the title. The x label will be within the quotes, Y label will be within the bracket, within the quotes, and then we have to give the title. Once everything is done, we have to go for the execution. We have to run the program. So here we have to pass the input. So now the control will come to the command window, and here we have to type the input, and here the input is one, two, three, four for X of N. Another input, one, two, one, two. Press the enter key. 
we'll be getting the output. And we can able to see how many zeros are padded because here the length is seven. So seven minus four will be your three. The three zeros are padded. This is the final output. Here the final output is one, four, eight, 14, 15, 10, and eight. So now you're going to see the plot. So this is the first sequence, the second sequence, and this is the convoluted signal. And here the index will be zero. Here the index will be n minus one. Seven minus one will be six. And here the starting point is what? n is equal to zero. And here it is n minus one. So these are the possible viva questions from this particular topic. Thank you all.